Hi everyone, I'm Steve Stoller. And I'm Shauna Haley, and this is Inside Plano, where we take you behind the scenes of our city. We'll introduce you to the faces and places who help make this a great place to live. And give us lots of reasons to love Plano. Welcome back to another Inside Plano, Steve Stoller. Well, welcome back is good. Hi, Shauna, it's good to see you. It's good to see you too, and it's, actually feels really good to see a lot of people anymore because things are starting to feel a little more like the old days. Yeah, I think uh, I think people are feeling a lot more confident about going out. You know, you see it in the restaurants and you see it in traffic on the roads. It's uh, It's starting to feel a little bit like it did more than a year ago. Yeah, you know, um, I could do without the traffic. It's not terrible, but I will confess I got a little spoiled from waiting to the last minute to leave home and still getting to the office in like 12 minutes. That was fabulous. (laughs) And those days are gone. And, you know, a lot of activities that we haven't seen for more than a year that were canceled or postponed are coming back. I'm starting to get emails about concerts again. There's going to be concerts starting up in the area. And uh, here's another good thing that we didn't see last year. The Plano Balloon Festival announced that they are officially coming back this year with with a format that's a little bit different. They really want to try and make it an up close and personal experience. So what they're going to do is they're going to allow people who come to the festival to get up close to the balloons and they can take their pictures with the balloonists and learn a lot about ballooning. I, I think it's going to be a great thing. I think people are really going to enjoy that. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's no better time than than a restart to change things up. And man, I have really missed the Balloon Festival. I mean, of course, we had the epic <laughs> rains a couple of years ago and then COVID. And so they are a sight for sore eyes to see them back out at Oak Point. It's going to be and great. It's, and it's such a great tradition. You know, I mean, they've been out there, I believe, more than four decades so Absolutely. it's a very rich, proud Plano tradition that once again will continue. Absolutely. Well, hey, let's talk about some other things that are coming back and on tap because I actually feel like we we have things to talk about that people can get involved with in Plano. Yeah, let's do it. How about Live Green? Live Green? Well, you know, it is June and June is time for the Do the Right Thing photo contest. I actually am contemplating whether I want to submit a picture of Glory B or not, because now we are out walking on the trails, complete with a leash, uh, treats to keep her from barking at other dogs, and a hefty supply of plastic bags to pick up after her. And of course, that's the point of the campaign is to remind everybody that you need to pick up after your pet, because pet waste is not, um, although it, it biodegrades, it actually is considered litter and it's it's not good to leave on the ground. So we have all the information on how to enter your pet in that contest. It's in the show notes. And Glory Bee is obviously your dog. Yes. <laughs> who is very beautiful and playful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and still puppyish. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, during the month of May, uh, we had a lot of rain. Oh, yeah. my gosh. So warm and dry days are coming, not to worry. And you don't want to miss out on the sprinkler fairs. Have you heard of those, Shauna? I have, and I think I'm going to take one this year because I feel like I need to know how to do more things myself. Yeah, you know, you can visit hands-on station-based sprinkler education taught by local irrigation experts. It's, uh, It's a great way to learn how to properly sprinkle your lawn and to save water as well. Absolutely. And we've all seen the yard where a sprinkler head has popped off and it's a gusher. So that's a simple thing that you can fix yourself, assuming you know how. And so that's part of those classes. You know, speaking of yards, um, that Live Green and Plano team is still on the lookout for great looking um, low water use lawns for the sustainable um, uh, water wise landscape tour. And if you have a yard that you want to nominate, Hopefully that's your own na- yard, not a neighbor's yard. Um, you can reach out to them. And the Waterwise Landscape Tour is fabulous. You get some really good ideas. So again, show notes are where you're going to find all the information you need. And guess what, Shauna? The, what? Live, the Live Green and Plano team is once again offering in-person education courses. You can request presentations for your neighborhood or social groups. We'll have the details in the show notes. 
So, you know, it's a little unfair to say everything's back to normal because for everybody, that's not true. Um, COVID definitely had impacts on people's lives beyond just um, health. You know, the economic impact was significant. And if you rent or own a single family home or an apartment, or if you live in a hotel or motel and you were financially impacted by COVID-19, there are resources available. You might actually qualify for emergency housing assistance. Um, the funds in that, in that uh, program can be used to cover rent payments, mortgage payments, utility costs, or the cost of living in a hotel motel. Um, there are some household income limits that apply all the information is available. We want to make sure that you know that there, there is help available. So visit our show notes for details on that. You know, Shauna, we were talking about concerts before and a return to normalcy. This next event really shows you that things are slowly getting back to normal. And I, it makes me so happy. We're really pleased to announce the return of the Courtyard Texas Music Series. We're kicking it off this year with singer-songwriter David Lee Murphy as a headlining artist. Uh, David has no zip code. It's his new collection, and it's already yielded a hit single and a duet with Kenny Chesney. Everything's going to be all right. Uh, Murphy's written multiple hits for country artists like Jason Aldean, Jay Gowen, and Blake Shelton. The show will take place at the Courtyard Theater Thursday, June 3rd, 7.30 p.m. Tickets are on sale now. You can get all the details, and you can buy your ticket through the link on our show notes. Courtyard Texas Music Series is presented by HEB. A store that we're all pretty excited about coming to Plano. I think they're moving dirt on the site right now. If anyone and missed it, Shauna, we got to tell them HEB is coming, the first one to yep. this area, and it's going to be at the corner of Preston Road and Spring Creek Parkway. Yep, very exciting. You know, you listed off several of my favorite country music artists, and I think that artists that are singer songwriters are some of the best out there there's just a whole different level of artistry and complexity to the music so I, I might have to get a ticket that sounds like a good concert well another exciting thing it's june and that means the pools are open planoparks.org has all the details you need before you head out to the pool with your sunscreen and floating devices and all that kind of fun stuff so go check it out it's good to have our pools back and speaking of pools, you can be a water watcher. Make sure that wherever you go, your child's not left unattended. Please follow pool rules at all times, play safely, and be mindful of others. Find a downloadable water watcher tag also in our show notes. And you know, there are actually splash pads um, that are, we have two of them in Plano. And if you wanna take your kiddos out, you gotta get them out of the house. You don't want to spend a day at the pool, but you want to get those kids wet and having fun. You can find a splash pad at the Plano Aquatic Center, which is near uh, Plano Senior High, or over at Windhaven Meadows Park. Both of those splash pads are operational now. And yet another sign of normalcy, summer classes are underway. We have a mix of online and in-person classes for people all ages and abilities. Register at planoparks.org. So if you are a library card holder and an active one at that, you probably are already aware that the Plano Public Library just went through a major catalog upgrade. Things look a little different, but man, is it super easy to use. Um, but if you didn't know, uh, there is now a new app available for the Plano Public Library. And you, if you're a library user, you'll want to download that. It has several amazing features. One thing that's pretty cool is that you can actually store your library card in it and check out using your own mobile device camera. So it simplifies the checkout process. You can set different language preferences. You can arrange porch side pickup if that's easier for you. And come on, let's face it, some days rather than unload everybody and go pick up stuff, it's easier just to run right through uh, the drive through basically. And so you can do all of that through the app. And we have all the information on how to do that. It's at planolibrary.org or it's in our show notes. And speaking of storing your library card, your number in the app, do you even have a library card? Did you know they are free for Plano residents as well as residents in reciprocal cities? You can learn more and register for a card on the library website. So many people don't know that, of course, the library is more than books. There are all kinds of great things that you can check out, but 
I like to listen to books when I'm on uh, a, a long road trip. And by that, I mean like an hour in the car, you know, listen to something. Or when I'm out for a walk, I like to listen to a book. And there are so many good choices. So it's free to get a library card and you can download a ton of books. So definitely take advantage of it. It's a great, great resource. Um, you know, it's it it's always a surprise to me. Speaking of being more than books, there is still a deep and abiding love for bookmarks. People love bookmarks, and we had great participation once again for our 2021 bookmark design competition. Um, there are huge banners in each of the library locations where you can see all the winning bookmarks for the various age categories, or you can go online and look at all of the entries and, and see the group that won. And summertime is camp time. And does the Plano Library have a great camp coming up? Take four days to dive deep into the industry standard, standard framework of unity. In this virtual four-day camp, you will learn how to make your very own 2D Mario-style video game. Sign up online and learn how to take your ideas for a game and put it to paper. That sounds fun. It does sound fun. And it's a little shocking um, to be a person of a certain age and know that Mario, that was extremely popular when I was a little kid, when it first came out on the, you know, and you could play, that it's still popular today. So I am not a gamer, but let me tell you what you do in this coding camp um, for people who are gamers, because it's definitely worth your investment of uh, camp time, especially since it's a free virtual program. Um, you're going to learn how to design characters, create a game, create a story map for that. Uh, you'll learn how the program works and dive into that software. Um, you'll learn how to develop those characters and bring them to life. Um, you're going to build the world that the characters exist in and um, add music, other sounds. So really, you are leaving Coding Camp with your very own customized game. So, and what's even more cool, you know, this isn't a program just for kids. This is a program that's actually designed for teenagers and adults. So bring out the kid in you and fellow Gen Xers. Let's bring Mario back to life. <laughs> You know, Mario may have been big when you were a kid, but that wasn't the same time when I was a kid. What were you, Galaga? <laughs> uh, let's see. When I was a kid, I don't think we had automobiles. It was kind of a long time ago. Gotcha, gotcha. You you were on the Oregon Trail. You're not the Oregon Trail. <laughs> <laughs> With us is our Assistant Director of Public Works, Dan Prendergast. Dan, thank you for joining us on Inside Plano today. How you doing? Great, Steve. How are you? Great. Hey, Dan, we always like to start off the interviews by asking our fellow teammates, what is it about you that most of us don't know? There are quite a few things, Steve, but I'll start with the fact that I was born in Illinois, uh, moved to the Dallas-Fort Worth area when I was two years old, lived in the Louisville Flower Mound area. Um, I graduated from Marcus High School and then went to Texas A&M and got a biology degree. So this is my second career. After my biology degree, I worked in the Houston Medical Center doing pediatric liver disease research for about two years, realized that I didn't have a passion for that, and went back to school up here at UTA, got a second degree in civil engineering, and then graduated and started on the private side for about seven years, and then moved to the public side. So uh, it's been a long path to get to where I am, but I wouldn't trade it. Interesting background. Yeah, no kidding. I was like, holy cow, I had no idea. That's a, one of my favorite parts of the podcast is learning more about the people we work with. Well, Dan, um, you live in the area. Steve lives here. I live here. And so you are all too familiar with the common refrain that our roads are always under construction. Is that in fact true? <laughs> Um, there's no question that we have a lot of work going on in the city of Plano. Um, not all work that you see along the roadway is for the roads. It could be for a water line. It could be for a franchise utility. It could be the North Texas Municipal Water District who's doing a project. So there's a lot of different entities that have work going on. I'll say from a road perspective, we do our best to limit the construction in adjacent areas as much as possible. Um, and also, a, a lot of people drive the same routes every day. You may work over at Plano Parkway and Parkwood, per se, where we have a project going on. Then you may pick your kid up at daycare at Park and Coit, which is pretty far away from that, but there's also a project going on there. So depending on your commute and your travel path, you may hit multiple construction zones, um, even though they're not nearby each other. So 
it really can can vary for individual users, but we do our best to make sure that we're not impacting the public to that degree by, by keeping our projects separate if possible. Well, I think I remember you saying in a, uh, I want to say that it was a town hall, but it might have been a neighborhood leadership meeting. You were talking about our aging roads. I mean, it's kind of in the context of aging infrastructure. How old are our roads anyway? So they vary quite a bit. The average age of our road in Plano is about 30 years old, which is the end of its original design life, typically. Um, our oldest roads are around 50 years old, and then our newest major roads are around 8 to 10 years old, and then we have some brand new residentials where some subdivisions have, have come in. So um, with that, with the aging network being around 30 years old, that's why you're, you are seeing increased construction to be able to maintain those roads well beyond their original design lifespan. Dan, a couple of years ago, the city manager had you put together a road report. What was that and how did it help your team? So that was really a, a change in approach for us. Uh, we had typically uh, not used data very much instead of uh, personal experiences, um, resident complaints and things like that to go find where to go next for our street projects. In 2016, we did a survey of all of our streets to look at the condition of, of those streets. And then this new road report took that data, looked at what we typically spent on roads in those different conditions and estimated a cost to maintain all of our roads over a 10 year time frame. So that kind of gave us a basis point to start from um, and then move into the bond program, which has happened. Let's talk about potholes. A few years ago, it seemed like they were all across Plano. Everywhere you drive, you see potholes. Now, today, it seems like we don't have that many potholes. Why is that? What happened? How did you solve the problem? I'm glad you've noticed. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> in, uh, when I started in Public Works in 2019, we did not have a proactive pothole program. Uh, the way that we learned about our potholes was from resident complaints, uh, calling in and saying, hey, there's a large pothole on this road here. And then we put it into our system and we got to it when we kind of got to it. Um, at that time, I think we had about 200 open pothole requests in our work order management system. So what we did was uh, on rainy days when our street inspectors didn't have contractors out working, we had them go drive all of our major roads. We created an app um, through GIS called Plano Potholes, and the passenger in the car would log potholes you know, along the way, and we would get the GPS coordinates for that. And then that first uh, survey that we did, which I think was summer of 2019, uh, we had about 3,000 potholes that we found, and we were able to address those by different work sharing with crews in about three months, about 1,000 potholes a month that they were filling. Um, we typically would do about 200. So we were able to kind of catch up with that program, and then we do that about twice a year now. I can say that our open potholes in our work order management system have, have gone down from about 200 to around uh, between 15 to 20 at, at you know, a time. Um, and our response time has gone from sometimes one to two weeks to about an average of, of say 48 hours or so, typically even less than that. So um, I'm really happy with the pothole program. I think it was a, a big boost for our, our um, drivers to not have to hit those major potholes on the roadway network when they're driving around and then be able to find them ourselves and not rely on them as well. So I want to talk about my favorite road to drive on in Plano, and it is part of my regular route, as you were talking about. And I know from questions and comments that come in that I am not the only person who loves this road. I'm talking about independence between Parker and I think it goes all the way down to, to 15th, where the asphalt overlay is. Why did you all decide to do an asphalt overlay on that road? So that was done back in November of 2017, but the project was actually planned, you know, about a year before that. And we realized that our maintenance techniques on our major roadways just weren't enough. You know, we would go in and we would fix the damaged concrete, uh, but the residents didn't really feel the benefit of that because the roadway still didn't drive very well. Um, we also saw that we would get potholes not too long after those improvements on concrete that we didn't repair uh, because, you know, that's still 30 year old concrete. So the technology for the ultra thin overlay had been around for 20, 25 years and also used in Europe. And it hadn't really been used much in a suburban setting where you've got left turn lanes and mean openings and things like that. But we tried it out and uh, it's done very well. So um, that's really kind of, I think, the impetus for why we 
decided to go with that. And then we wanted to give it about three years to see how it performed and it's done well. You mentioned that it was an ultra thin overlay. I think there was, and I think still is quite a bit of confusion. What's the difference between an asphalt road and an ultra thin asphalt overlay? Uh, several. There's even differences between asphalt overlays as well, but I'm not going to get complicated. Um, so a typical asphalt road in Texas, you're going to have a gravel base that's compacted. Then you'll have four inches of this thing called type B, which is base asphalt, and then two inches of type D, which is surface asphalt. It's smoother. Um, and that's what you see in rural areas and, 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 and other places in Texas. Those are much cheaper to build than concrete roads. However, they require a lot more maintenance earlier on in the lifespan. You know, a concrete road, you can basically uh, leave for 20, 25 years and not see much damage to it. So when people think of asphalt, they're thinking of that typical section of asphalt. In our case, we're using an ultra thin overlay that's been optimized for this type of use. So the binder that we use works very well, holds all the rock together so you don't see loose rock around there. Um, it also... Uh, resists cracks so you don't see cracks coming up that fast and it holds together very well when you do see a crack so um, it's a very different product although it looks the same um, there and there are very different there, there are a lot of differentiations between the type of product that, that we use and also other ones as well so dan the overlay project was kind of an experiment if you will did it did it actually work the way you expected it to I would say yes. Um, you know, we knew that the research was solid behind that product. Um, one question we had was if the city of Plano or, or the residents would accept asphalt here in the city. You know, people have preconceived notions about different materials. Asphalt is, is sometimes seen as a lesser material. Uh, but, you know, after the first six months or so, when we had some negative comments about it, it's been nothing but positive comments. I mean, it truly is one of the nicest roads to drive in Plano. It's smooth. It's quiet. You have the benefits of the aesthetics where it looks like one complete project from point A to point B, uh, not that patchwork look that we get when we just do the concrete improvements. Um, so, and it's also protecting the concrete. We've done some pothole surveys and had much fewer potholes in that section compared to the um, non-asphalt section that was just concrete repairs. Um, there have been a lot more potholes in that piece there because it's not being protected. One thing I failed to mention uh, is that the overlay really does seal off the entire pavement surface. Uh, the concrete pavements have a lot of joints in them that allow them to expand and contract when they heat and cool. Those joints are sealed when the concrete's new, but those seals fail eventually. And doing the overlay allows us to kind of put a whole layer on top to seal that water off and keep it from getting into our subgrade, which we all know with clay soils, they expand and, and contract quite a bit, and that can really damage a roadway surface. So we're very happy with the way it's performed. So we hear more asphalt overlays are coming. Can you tell us where and when? Sure. Um, so we uh, start construction on Wind Haven from the West City limits to DNT. That should start at the end of this month. Weather pending, of course, we've had a lot of rain. And then with that project is Parker Road from Preston to Independence. So that's one project that should be complete sometime midsummer. We just opened bids on Jupiter uh, from Park to Chaparral, which is basically the northern city limit over there. Um, that open bids, I think, this week, so you're talking about two months or so to go to council, get approval, and start construction on that project. And then we're putting together a large project uh, to overlay Coit from Parker to 121, which is um, now under construction right now. And then Plano Parkway, Preston to DNT, and possibly further west of that. Uh, Hedgecoaks from Preston to Independence, and then some other areas possibly as well. And so this project is really geared towards only overlays. We're trying to find roads that are in that category of being 25, 30 years old, but have had recent repairs or show signs of movement in their joints to be able to go and get that protective overlay on top of that pavement. So, I, I mean, I know when we kind of talked through what we were discussing, we didn't uh, asked this specifically, but I'm curious, you said, you know, how you're targeting those roads. So it sounds like it's roads that have recently been repaired, um, not a full replacement, but a, a repair. And so you want to extend the life of that repair or it's fitting in that age and it could go downhill and you want to keep, you want to extend the life. Did I understand that correctly? In, in general, yes. I mean, when, when we're looking at the budget, we have to see, okay, you know, if we go do Plano Parkway on the east side, which is going to come up soon, there's a lot of concrete repair with that project and that needs to be bid out separately and it's going to take a year or two. So we kind of have to, to get the 
roads in worse condition going with a project that we know is going to take a year or two, and then also go find those roads that we put the concrete improvements into, but haven't put the overlay on yet, or roads that are, are, are 25, 30 years old, which show signs of that water infiltration where that overlay is really going to be a good investment for that pavement. So it's a combination of a lot, um, and it has to fit into that budget as well. And sometimes that means moving a project one year to be able to fit two or three more in on the, on, on the current year. So a lot goes into it. And also looking at the existing utilities, if there's water main that has to be replaced, we're not going to go put the overlay down. If there's a future franchise utility, boring contractor or, or, or someone cutting across the street, we, we don't want to put the overlay down there either because we want it to last for a long time. Once you start an overlay project, about how long does it take to do um, from start to finish? So when you're talking about Windhaven and Parker coming up, which is just overlay, you're looking at about a couple weeks. Um, so it's very quick. They can do one lane at a time and they just kind of progress down the whole section, come back and do the next lane. And, and you know, it's it's minimally disruptive and very quick. Awesome. Hey, Dan, I have one question for you. During COVID, a lot of people didn't go out on the road. So we saw a, a very significant reduction in traffic which really gave us an opportunity to increase the construction load a little bit. Now that it seems that we're slowly getting back to normal, I've noticed just in the last few weeks, there's a lot of traffic back on the road. What happens to that effort to try to increase the amount of construction we do on Plano roads? I think it's, it's being uh, cognizant of where these projects are, what the schedule is, coordinating with parks and engineering and, and trying to minimize a lot of projects in one area. Um, it can be a challenge because our city kind of grew in clumps. And so you had large sections of your infrastructure being built within, you know, a five or 10 year span. So it's all aging at the same rate. Um, so that can mean that you're going to have more projects in those areas when that, when, when those infrastructures come to a certain age where they're, they, they need to be maintained. So there, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, I, we don't decrease our work because um, of traffic volumes necessarily, we try to do it more efficiently and change our approach to, to, to be able to do both and try to minimize the impact. There's going to be impact. Construction always has an impact, um, but I think being thoughtful about it is very important. Well, you know, with that in mind, if residents or, you know, just pass through traffic, see problems on roads and want to make sure that the city is aware of it, how can they best do that? So the best way to go about it would be to download our Fix It app and then submit a complaint through there. Or you can just Google Fix It Plano and on the website, you can find roadways on there and submit that. It goes into um, our cartograph system, which then is assigned to a person to go out and investigate. And then there's notes taken in the system too. So we kind of track all of that information um, and are able to report back to you. Dan, thank you so much for joining us on our podcast. Your team does a great job. We see them out there working hard, trying to make the streets the best they can. Uh, Dan Prendergast, the Assistant Director of Public Works. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye, Dan. It's always good talking to Dan and hearing about all the great things that are going on. You know, I know a lot of people, it gives them headaches when they see all the construction, but sometimes they have a hard time seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And comparatively to other cities around North Texas, our roads are really, really good and very well maintained. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah. Um, I travel to another city that I will not name uh, to run with friends on the weekends. It's in the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area, and the roads are in terrible shape. So I think one thing that it's important to keep in mind is that if you let roads go past a certain point, it becomes more expensive to fix them, and, and that can quickly become a very difficult thing to manage from a budget standpoint and, and the number of roads that need to be worked on. So I thought the road report was really interesting and in using that analysis as a guideline for where you fix roads is just a really smart way to do business. So uh, I don't like construction for sure, but I prefer it over potholes and broken roads for yeah. sure. We have something, another project, this is really exciting. And, yeah. you know, a lot of people in Plano and from elsewhere come to Legacy West and the shops at Legacy. And there's going to be a safe way to get to either location from either location. Uh, they're calling it the pedestrian walkway or a canopy walkway. It's going to be on Legacy Drive and it crosses over the Dallas North Tollway. 
the walkway is going to create a safer, more pleasant and attractive connection between the east and west sides of Legacy. And it's really nice. There's two separate 10 foot wide paths. There's a traffic safety wall between the road and the walkway, and it features canopies and lighting. We're really, really excited about that coming to fruition and opening. Absolutely. And, you know, that's going to be a game changer over in that area. A lot of uh, conferences happen. There are hotels on both sides of the Dallas North Tollway. So to know that people can park once or Uber once and then get to both sides of that, that area is just incredible because there's a lot to see and do in the area. Yeah, it's funny because now a lot of people will just go to one or the other and there's great restaurants and entertainment venues on both sides of the tollway. So yeah. now it'll just be a simple walk above the tollway and you can go wherever you want to go on either side. Absolutely. I think it's going to be great. Can't wait to see it. Same here. Well, hey, I have some exciting news. We were talking uh, just a few minutes ago about the library and how they are more than books. Did you know, Steve, that our Plano Public Library was named uh, the 2021 Library of the Future? They received that award from the American Library Association, and that they were named that because of their innovative use of technology, and they use that to provide one-on-one -on -one tech training they do that with seniors, um, with uh, ESL students, just a host of organizations. And so the library's approach really is to be proactive. They are helping to bridge the digital divide that exists in our community. And um, at the same time, also making people aware of all the many free resources that are available through the library. That's wonderful. Yeah, so we're excited for them and um, also not at all surprised. Because we and you know, Sean, what they do is they take tech training as well to underserved adults through outreach classes using library devices. Uh, they use library staff. They use corporate volunteers. The library staff provided innovative training service partners, including the Chase Oaks Family Center, the Brain Injury Network of Dallas, and local senior living facilities. So just a great program all around. Yep, absolutely. So the library comes to you rather than you having to come to the library. So that's super great. Well, Plano, I think this comes to the end of yet another Inside Plano. Wouldn't you agree, Steve? We've covered yes. quite a bit. And I love June because hopefully it's going to mean swimming again. <laughs> I know. I'm just, I'm excited for everything. It feels like every day you're getting to open like a birthday present you know, because like what's going to be the new thing and knowing that there are ways to, to re-engage with life and to do it safely and knowing that the city is making every effort to, to offer programs and services in a way that's safe uh, just makes me happy. And it's great to see people back in our wonderful Plano businesses and our restaurants and, um, it just, it's a good day. It's a good day to be in Plano. And when you're happy, I'm happy. <laughs> That's right. Well, we have more exciting news to bring to you in upcoming um, episodes of Inside Plano. But as always, if you have questions or suggestions for things that you'd like us to talk uh, more about with city staff, we'd love to hear from you. You know how to do that. Just send us an email to askplano at plano.gov. And thank you so much for all of you who've done that already. Also, if you don't mind, when you're in the App Store uh, downloading this episode, give us a rating or a review. It really helps other people find our show. We love being with you each month and telling you all the things that you need to know about our wonderful city of Plano. Until next time, for Steve Stoller and myself, we say goodbye. Thanks, everybody. See you next month. And that's it for our Inside Plano. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did doing it. If you have any comments or suggestions, send them to us at askplano at plano.gov. Bye. Talk to you next month. The Inside Plano podcast is brought to you by the City of Plano.